What gifts of love could I offer to a king? Was my love's glory held within my offering? When he alone is worthy, our glory song is inscribed upon my heart. This treasure held in an alabaster jar, I bring to bring.
Good morning, everyone. I'm not quite sure what that police siren was at the end of that. That was weird. But obviously it was there just to draw your attention to the fact that we're about to start. So a warm welcome. Um, we hope you're all well this morning. Uh, for those of you that don't know us, my name is Chris and this is my wife Sarah. Good morning. And together we lead Kings Inverness. This has been a tough week for lots of people in many different ways. And it's something that we want to kind of address this morning as we go throughout this morning. Um, but before we get into some of that today, we want to encourage you, as always, to, to share the stream. And we want the, the, the hope that is wrapped up in the gospel message to go far and wide today. Because we know that actually it's Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit that will change situations and will change this world. So that's what we want everyone to do and why we want people to do it as well, just to share the hope that we carry today. So if you can do that right now, then that would be fantastic. One bit of exciting news um, that if you haven't already heard, we're going to be having a quiz on Ooh. Thursday night. Um, say, what time is it on Thursday night? Uh, I want to say half past seven. Is that right? I've got no idea. I was, <laughs> I was hoping you knew that answer. I think question. it's half past seven. I think so, that's what we decided so, on in the end. <laughs> You tell us as well rehearsed. Um, <laughs> if you are on the King's mailing list, then hopefully you'd have had some information about it. If you're not on the mailing list, then if you email office at kingsinverness.com, then you can get yourself put on. Uh, we're looking for people to be in teams. Obviously, we're going to do it all via Zoom. And uh, Beth and Reigns has been helping us out with all the questions. So we're looking, right. looking forward to that. Yeah. So if, the, if sorry, if you want to be in a team, if you um, email me with your team and whoever's in your team, that would be really helpful because then we can get the group set up beforehand. Yeah. So Sarah's email address is oh, yeah. Sarah at Kingsinverness dot com. If you want to get in touch with us at all, then you can do that via the Facebook page. Those messages come direct to Sarah and I anyway. So it's Thursday night. The, we think it's half seven. Hopefully Fiona will put the, the, the real time <laughs> in the right notes because we're having a bit of a mind blank this morning. Um, and uh, if, if you're in a team, then let us know which team and who's in your team. And also, if you want to get involved but you're not in a team and don't have a team uh, that you're already a part of, yep. then again, let us know and then we can allocate you, can you to a team. We want team. everyone to be included in this who wants to be included. So hopefully that is clear as mud <laughs> and uh, we can <laughs> uh, crack on this morning. So what's going to happen in a minute, we're going to hand over to Gareth and he's going to lead us in a time of worship. Then Jean's going to do a kids talk this morning for us. Then Sarah and I are going to be bringing a word, looking at, like I say, some of the, the, the difficult stuff that's been going on this week. And then we're going to finish with Richard and Liz Sided, who are going to take us through communion. So Sarah's going to pray and then we're going to hand over to Gareth. Yeah. Father God, you are always good. Mm. There is never a time when you're not good. And so I just pray this morning that as we come together as a community, as a family, um, we would be able to know your goodness, yeah. to know your greatness and to know your love as we share together. We thank you for each and every person that is represented, that is watching this morning. Would you just pour out your blessing on each and every person, on their households, on their families. And we just thank you that you are good. All through your son, Jesus. It's in his name. Amen. 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 We'll zoom that camera around. The cameraman sat down. This is the problem. <laughs> he's looking at me like, now like he doesn't know what he's supposed to be doing. Oh, technology, honestly. There we go. <laughs> so, Gareth, are you there, Gareth? Otherwise, Richard's going to lead us in the morning. Oh, there he is. There we go. Morning. There, we are. there I am. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good to see you. Um, I'm just going to start. Oh, are we there yet? Yes, we're, we're there. there. Yeah. It's marvellous. Um, yeah, I'm just going to start playing what I'd uh, encourage us to do just before we kind of actually get into fully into the song. So I just want you to. <laughs> Hang on, Gareth. Oh, the technical issues. We were oh. before. <laughs> That's not Gareth. <laughs> there we are. There he is. <laughs> we're not having Sorry. a good start to this day. And I'm there. You're it's all back. going a bit fair shape this morning. <laughs> I try to turn the volume up and I change the channel. <laughs> uh, we can deal with pear shapes. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> okay. I don't know where we got to in terms of what you, you have, have heard and what you haven't. Telling um, us what we want, you want us to do, Gareth. But, that's what you were doing. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna start playing, and um, what I'd encourage you to do is just begin to open up your heart, uh, and just uh, just let, just kind of go with the music. Um, I look at you, but sometimes engaging uh, with things uh, on the internet is a little bit more difficult than when you come you you're right there. Um, so I just want us to spend a bit of time consciously and deliberately kind of preparing ourselves to worship. So just uh, as I play, and then as I start the scene, just join.
Crashes over me, crashes over me. You are for us, you are not against us. Champion of heaven, made a way for all to answer. I'm free, you've rescued me, all I am is yours, by grace I'm free, you've rescued me.
we could ever see. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, oh, oh. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, Worthy of every breath we could ever be, we live for you. Oh, we we'll live for you. Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and leave me in your love to those around me. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me.
your heart to lead me in your love to those who love me. I'm free and you rescued me all I am is true by grace I'm free and you rescued me all I am is true This is the air I breathe. Mm -hmm. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my day. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me, and I. This is my table. Your very word spoken to me. By 
by grace I'm free You've rescued me All I am is yours By grace I'm free You've rescued me All I am is yours Cause I found a love greater than life itself I found a hope stronger and nothing compares I once was lost, now I'm alive Bless you guys. Have a great week. And we'll be over to Jean to speak to the kids. So Thank you, Gareth, for that. We were seeing how this get the set up. Good morning. Hello. Today, I thought I'd show you some of our family photos. I'm enjoying seeing the pictures on people's walls and family photos in other people's houses on all these Zoom meetings and Facebook meetings. So... Can you guess who this is? Yes, this is me, Marion Morris, nearly 40 years ago. And this one, who could they be? That's our children when they were at primary school. And just here behind me, I love this one of us all dressed up, ready to go somewhere special. Now, have a look over here. Who do you think these people are? Yes, that's me with Morris, taken last year. And can you spot our daughter Abigail and our son Daniel? Now they have children of their own. So the four children in these photographs are our grandchildren. Have you ever tried to draw your family tree? All your relatives in a picture spreading out like branches on a tree? They can be very complicated. But here's just a little bit of ours. This is Morris's parents, brothers and sisters, grandchildren, great grandchildren. Just look at how many people have come from Morris's parents. It's amazing, isn't it? Now, do you remember what Rosie thought about last week? First of all, it was that Easter was when Jesus rose from the dead so that we can be his children in his royal family. Princes and princesses. I like the tiara. Then, when Jesus went back to heaven, he told his followers or his family to wait for his Holy Spirit to come, to make them more like him and to give them power to do things for him. What was the first thing that his followers did after the Holy Spirit filled them? They told a lot of people the good news about Jesus. And 3,000 people became Christians that very first day, all part of Jesus' family. And what do you think those people did when they were filled with the Holy Spirit? I'm sure they went and told their friends and family too. Let's look 
look again at my family tree. Imagine if this was people sharing the good news and bringing people into God's family. How quickly the church family grows. God wants all of us to know his Holy Spirit's power. And he wants all of us to help people join his family. You are never too young or too old to tell people the good news about Jesus. Why not this week ask Jesus who you could tell? Maybe people you live with, people you're seeing on school meetings, friends that you're talking to, maybe people that you won't see for a while, but you could be praying for them while we're still in lockdown. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, help us all to talk to our friends and family about you and your good news that you want them to become part of your family and have eternal life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your Holy Spirit living in us to give us the power and the strength to do that. We pray this in your precious name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Jean, for sending us that. As Chris put in the comments, apologies for the zoomed inness of Jean's face. It wasn't like that as she sent it to us. It was perfectly recorded. We don't know what went wrong there. We seem to be having some techie things again this week, such as the way that it works. <laughs> we, as Chris mentioned earlier on, this week has been a, a tough week and a tough week for us and a tough week for lots and lots of people, not just within our church family, but around the globe. You can't fail to have noticed what's been going on if you've seen any news at all. And of course, we're referring specifically to the tragic death of George Floyd that, as I say, has gained global attention. And, you know, all week we've been talking amongst ourselves and with the elders about how to respond to that in a meaningful way. Um, and in a way that doesn't um, create hurt or cause offence to people, but does address how we feel as individuals and also how Kings feels and is thinking. And so, you know, there's been huge amounts of conflicting opinions. And so we've kind of taken a little bit of time to make a decision as to what to do. You know, some have said to us that we shouldn't maybe address it like this in front of, <laughs> in front of the camera. Others have said that to say nothing at all actually says something quite powerful. Some have spoken out publicly and have been criticized for it. Some have stayed quiet and again have been criticized. And so, you know, we, we read one comment that came from the Courier website, the local papers website, and it said that this is, an, this is an American thing. This isn't really nothing to do with us. And, you know, can you, you read that and something about that doesn't, doesn't sit with us and we know that that's not the case. And so it has been really difficult to know how to address it. But we want you to know this, that we have been affected. Yeah. We have been listening and we want you to hear our hearts, really. And so we're really massively grateful to some of our King's family who have been hugely vulnerable and open and honest with us this week in particular and shared their hearts, shared, shared what's going on with them. And we are absolutely enormously grateful to those people. And so what we've heard over and over again this week is a really common plea that we should be educated on this issue of racism and that we should educate ourselves on this massive massive topic and that's what we've been trying to do which is maybe why it seems that we've perhaps been a little bit slow to respond but actually what we've been trying to do is grapple with um just grapple with it really and get get to know the issues and get to understand what's going on so that we come from a place of greater understanding and not one of ignorance and so there was one comment and I know that it got to got to Chris and somebody said to him, you know, we talk about these big issues. We talk about lots of issues, we talk about mental health and all, all sorts of things from the front at church. When, when you know, when we're together, as we have been from, for many years in the building, we've talked about hugely big issues. This is a massive issue. And so really, it's no different. And we should be talking about it. But what it is, is much harder for us to 
gauge how people are feeling yeah. because we're looking at it through a phone, through a camera, and we're not looking in your faces, we're not able to eyeball you, <laughs> as it were, to get a real sense of feeling. And so if you're watching right now and you are part of King's, you would call yourselves part of King's family, hopefully you know us and you know our hearts and you hear this from a place of relationship and from family. And maybe if you're watching today and you're, you, you wouldn't say that you were part of our King's family, but you're watching with interest, we hope that you hear our hearts yeah. as we sit and speak today. And, you know, we've been reading 1 Corinthians um, and what we've seen in all of Paul's letters and Paul's writing is he is not afraid to address the big issues, regardless of how tough they are. And so we came to wonder maybe at what point did we start to, not we necessarily, but, you know, the world in general, people in general, when did we start to fear being criticised more than we fear speaking out? Yeah. You know, when did that fear of criticism become greater than the fear of knowing that we have to speak out against injustice? And as I heard that as a, as a statement and maybe a question, my thought was that I'm not sure that we haven't spoken publicly about this because we're afraid of criticism. The fact is we put a survey out to you a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> that was probably a, a, a greater way to, to be criticised, perhaps. Not that you did, you were amazing, but <laughs> we did that. But actually, I think for me, it wasn't so much criticism that I was fearing, but I was coming from a place of not wanting to get, get it wrong, not wanting to hurt or offend or to, to cause offence to people. Um, and certainly people of the black community that, that we know and we love. What we wanted is for you to see us, to get our, our body language, to get our feelings through, not just a statement that we maybe put on social media, but through the nuance of our, yeah. our, our emotion that hopefully you'll feel through this, um, this today. And so that's really where, where we're coming from. When we did our last vision night, you might remember that we put out uh, another survey <laughs> um, and we asked people to say, name three words that you would say described kings and the top word, you know, without any doubt, mm. was family. And in our home, probably like yours or like many homes around the, around the country, if one person is hurting, then we're all hurting. And the Bible talks about this in 1 Corinthians 12, 26 to 27. It says, if one part suffers, all parts suffer. If one part is honoured, all the parts are glad. Mm. All of you together are Christ's body and each of you is a part of it. So right now within Kings, we know that people are suffering and hurting at the moment. But this is bigger than just Kings. This is a global issue. This is affecting the church globally at mm. this time. The church globally is hurting and suffering at this time. So the church in the widest sense of the word yeah. is feeling the effects of what's been going on this week. So if all of us together are Christ's body, we are each a part of it. If one suffers, we all suffer. And that's why we can't say this is simply an American issue. Mm. This is an issue of humanity. This is an issue that's affecting the body of Christ right here, right now. So we can't get away with saying it's an American issue. Yeah. Another thing we have to be quite strong on this morning is let's not kid ourselves that racism doesn't happen here in little old sleepy Inverness because it absolutely does. And we've heard stories this week of how people have been affected by racism yeah. right here in our city and our home of Inverness. So in thinking about how the best way to address this, and again, say, I just want to echo what Sarah said, you know, we want to come at this this morning from a place of greater understanding. Mm. Um, that, and there's been a lot of conversations, a lot of reading, a lot of watching stuff online to try and hopefully speak from a, a better place uh, this morning. But one good bit of advice that we got, quite a straightforward, obvious bit of advice, you might even think, what would Jesus have done in this situation? What did Jesus or how did Jesus speak about issues of injustice? So that's what we want to kind of look at a little bit today. So the first place to start in the Sermon on the Mount in Jesus, in, Jesus, in Matthew even, <laughs> uh, chapter 5, verse 6, it says, God bless those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. And actually the whole issue of seeking out justice is a common theme right the way through the Bible, old and new. In Proverbs 31, 8 and 9, it says, Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. Ensure justice for those being crushed. Yes, speak up for the poor and helpless and see that they get justice. 
In Isaiah 117, it says, Learn to do good, seek justice, help the oppressed, defend the cause of the orphans, fight for the rights of the widows. So how is it that we actually seek justice? And we want to look at, to begin with, with something actually that we can all do, and that's prayer. And starting very much with ourselves. Yeah. So Psalm 139 verses 23 and 24, really um, well-known um, scripture. And it says this, it says, search me, yeah. O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. And so previous, this is a little bit later in Psalm 139, and previous to that, David is crying out to God um, and, and, and speaks of his thoughts about, about the wicked. Um, and as he does that, it leads him to start to reflect back on himself, about his, his own heart as he writes this psalm. And if we're to join with that prayer that David was, was sort of praying as he wrote, by asking God to examine us mm -hmm. and our hearts to point out any anything that offends God in us what we do is we open ourselves up to allowing God to change us to mold us to shape us to shape our thoughts to shape our character and our motive and to point out things that are offensive to him and so before we come looking at how others are behaving and seeking to see a change in others Let's make sure that we ourselves, first and foremost, are right yeah. with God. Last week, we talked um, a lot about prayer and how that in praying, we petition God and we see how he can change situations and how he desires to change situations as a result of our prayer. And it's often said that any new move of God, any, any revival is birthed in the constant and um, long-standing prayer of people and so and um, we're thinking um about you know revivals of old thinking about the, the two little old ladies that prayed in their home on the isle of lewis you know one was 82 the other was 84 they were sisters weren't they yeah um and you know one of them was blind the other one was completely arthritic but it was through their persistence in their petition of god that the hebridean hebridean revival came about really interesting you know, in the parable of the persistent widow that we find in, in Luke 18, you know, we see a woman who comes before the judge seeking justice mm -hmm. against her enemies. And it tells us that she came repeatedly, she came time and time again. And one of the things that really stands out there is the fact that sometimes justice actually takes a lot longer than perhaps it should. But the encouragement is that we should not give up, mm. that we should continue to pray, to petition to pray for and with those people who have been wronged. Right. And in Luke 18, 6 to 8, it says, Then the Lord said, Learn a lesson from the unjust judge. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you quickly, he will grant justice to them. And there's just one bit in there that kind of really stands out to me. Are, are we really willing to cry out day and night for issues of injustice? And I think that's quite a challenge to us. It's, again, it's one of the reasons why we didn't just want to kind of put a statement on Facebook and, and just kind of move on. Are we serious about injustice mm -hmm. in our society? Are we serious about crying out to God day and night to see the situation changed? The next thing I want us to consider is don't confuse justice with revenge and for me this is a really important point because unfortunately in situations like this anger even a just anger can actually spill over into actions that harm the cause and not help it and i was really struck by the words of terence floyd so george floyd's brother and he addressed some rioters in america on monday and he stood up before them and said violence will not bring my brother back he said, let's do it another way. Let's do it another way. Mm -hmm. So what does doing it another way look like? And I think we get a glimpse into that in Romans 12, 14 to 21. And Paul writes, bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people and don't think you know it all. 
Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you're honourable. Do, do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scriptures say, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you'll heap burning coals of shame on their heads. Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. Mm. You know, seeking justice is not about taking the law into our own hands. You know, one day we're all going to have to stand before God and give an account of our lives. And Tom sent us a, a, a teaching, didn't he? It was at the, uh, on Friday, I think it was. It's probably the best teaching that we've come across this week about addressing this, 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 this entire sad situation. And in it, there's a, a preacher, Mark Chirona, if I'm saying that right, Tom can maybe <laughs> keep us right in that. But he describes the cross as being a great leveller. And I thought that, that really struck me. Because what, ha what the cross does, the cross reminds us actually we've all sinned and we've all fallen short of the glory of God. So our job is not to just stand in judgment over anyone. But we are asked by God to call out things that are not right. So how do that two things kind of work together? Mm -hmm. You know, how do we call out things that are, are, that are unjust and don't line up with scripture, but not from a place of judgment? And I think there is an important difference and it's to do with our motivation. You see in 1 Corinthians 5, what Paul is doing, he's actually writing to the church leaders of the day and he's challenging them to call out wrong behaviour and deal with it, the stuff that's going on in the church. He says, if we don't, it's like yeast that spreads through the dough. And I think it's the same principle that applies here. If we don't call out wrong behaviour when we see it, people then think that's acceptable and then it starts to affect the culture around us. And what Paul is all about, what he's trying to do here, is get people to turn back to God. It's about repentance and salvation. Where for me, standing in judgment is often about seeking revenge. I want them to suffer. I want them to pay for what they've done, opposed to try and lead people to a place of repentance. So can you see there, there's a difference in that in terms of the motive? And it's really to do with our heart's mm -hmm. attitude towards the situation and if we if we dive back into the sermon on the mountain this time Matthew 5 43 to 45 Jesus is saying very similar things to what Paul wrote this is when Jesus is teaching about loving our enemies he says you've heard the law that you've heard the law that says love your neighbor and hate your enemy but I say love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you and that way you'll be acting as true children of your father in heaven for he gives his sunlight to both evil and the good and he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. You know, praying for your enemies, praying that God will bless them is really hard. Let's not pretend today that it's not because it absolutely is. But it's also really hard to do that and stay in a place of anger and hate. I challenge you to do that this week and see how you get on. And I think that's the point. God wants to move us away from that place of anger that leads to hatred and moves us towards instead moves us towards a place of love that leads us to forgiveness mm -hmm. it's really important in situations like this another thing that we need to really watch out for is don't let your hearts go hard at this time you know in Matthew 19 18 Jesus this is uh, Jesus replying to a question about marriage and divorce and Jesus replied Moses permitted divorce only as a concession to your hard hearts but it was not what God had originally intended so this is obviously talking about marriage so what relevance is this to what we're talking about today but that verse has always struck me about how how fatal a hard heart is to any relationship yeah I think what's the, the, so important to remember is that Jesus came to see all people yeah. restored to the Father that's every single person Paul gave some very direct instructions in helping people to find the cross. You know, we, Chris has already mentioned that, that great leveller that it is. And that's what we should be aiming 
to do. That's what we should be working towards happening, to, to encourage people to find the cross, to find Jesus Christ, to understand who he is and his saving grace for us all. And as Chris is saying, if we allow that hard heart to develop in us, what it does is it seriously damages our ability to win people to Jesus because we are instantly pushing people away. We don't, don't want them near. And again, it takes us back to that, uh, that Psalm 139. I'm going to read it again because it's so important. Yeah. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Ultimately, it is only through knowing Jesus Christ and allowing the Holy Spirit to work in our lives that any of us are transformed. And something that really struck me this week was that just getting back to that understanding that what God desires of us is not ritualistic worship. It's not, you know, doing the same thing over and over again in a religious way. But actually what he's done is he's given us a summary of what to do and how to live and how to behave. And that comes from Micah chapter six. And that is to do what is right, to act mm. justly. And in that, it's also to call out injustice. It's not just to act justly on, on our behalf and in our behavior, but it's to call out injustice as we see it. And right now, the focus is on racism, that injustice, that absolute evil that is racism. You know, and that, that thing to treat somebody differently based on the color of their skin is an evil. Let's not make any two ways about it. And so that's what Micah says. That's what the, what the, the book of Micah says. It says that, we should do what is right and to act justly, to love mercy yeah. and to walk in a posture of humility with our God. It pleases God when we do good, when we seek justice, when we relieve oppression, when we defend the orphan and the widow, when we de defend those that are being oppressed. And in particular, in relation to what's happened over the last few days, the last couple of weeks, what that may look like is we seek to stand with our brothers and sisters of the black community as they walk this road. It really is that straightforward in terms of that, is to seek justice and to fight against injustice, to stand with our brothers and sisters. Yeah. You know, Romans 2, 4 tells us it's the kindness of God that draws people to repentance. Yeah. And I think for me that's what really comes through in, in the passage we read from Romans 12. It's by our actions towards other people even when those actions are undeserved it's those actions though that will draw people to god where the transformation will happen mm. you know we can we can come up with as many statements and sermons as we like the real change will take place in people's lives when god deals with their hearts and we have to help people get to that place where we love, or sort of, we almost love them to the place where they can experience the Holy Spirit convicting them, you know. And we have to love people into that situation. And again, we just want to emphasise: we understand that some of the things we're saying today, this is not easy. But as we talked about, you know, on, on Pentecost Sunday, the Holy Spirit was given as a helper to us because God knows that actually what He's asking of us at times is really challenging. So we have to draw on the Holy Spirit ourselves to enable us to walk some of this stuff out. But it's by the love that we show other people that they will know that we are followers of Jesus. Yeah. And in 1 John 3, 19, it says, our actions will show that we belong to the truth. Yeah. We want people to know the truth. We want people to turn away from things like racism and turn towards the truth. And we can play our part in that. We can do it by praying and petitioning God, crying out day and night like the persistent widow. Mm -hmm. And we can do it by our actions, by not seeking revenge, by not allowing our hearts to go hard, but finding ways of loving people. It's the kindness of God that draws people to repentance. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, that's what, you know, that's how we do what Terence Floyd is asking of us. That's how we do it another way. So we're just going to pray now before we hand over to Richard and Liz, who are going to take us through communion. So Heavenly Father, we, we think about all the things that have happened this week. Father, we lift up before you the people who are hurting. Father, the, the family of George Floyd. Father God, we ask that you, your 
for your Holy Spirit, you would know they would know your peace and your compassion and mm -hmm. your love. Mm -hmm. But Father, help us this morning to do what we read in that psalm. Help us to really be honest before you. Father God, we ask that you would help us search our hearts. If there's anything in my life that offends you, mm -hmm. Father God, I ask that you would point it out to me today. Mm -hmm. And Holy Spirit, would you help me deal with it? Mm -hmm. And pray that for all of us. Help us to be better neighbours. Help us to mm -hmm. love one another better than we've done before. Help us not to stand in judgment over one another. Father God, help us draw people to you so they can experience the life that flows from the, the knowing a relationship with you. Mm. In Jesus' name, mm. amen. 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 We're going to hand over to Richard and Liz now. Hopefully they're waiting on the Zoom call because we'll just sort it out. Guys, can you unmute yourself? That would be great. Okay. That's it. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Give us two Just seconds. Turn we'll turn right. That's great. And if you could do me one more thing, if you could maybe just snuggle in a wee bit more so we get both of you in the picture, that would be wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Is that you? Absolutely perfect. Thank you. So shall we start now? Go for it. Right. Well, good morning, everyone at King's. We hope you're all continuing to keep fit and well and are finding interesting and ingenious ways to fill your days and weeks. It's likely that most of us have been asking, how long is this going to go on for? How many more people are going to get ill before this pandemic passes over us? In fact, this week has been a momentous week in many ways. And as far as, as and particularly as far as COVID-19 is concerned, in the UK alone, more than 40,000 people have now died of the virus. And as horrendous as that statistic actually is, it is also important to remember that even if only one person had died, that, that, that life would have still mattered and there would still be pain and suffering for family and friends of that person because they were loved and they were valued. It reminded Lib and I of the story in Genesis chapter 18 when Abraham talks to God asking if he would spare those in Sodom and Gomorrah if the righteous were to pray. Abraham asked, if God found 50 of the people praying, would he spare the lives of the two cities? When God said that if that were the case, then he would spare the town's lives, Abraham got up the courage to ask uh, what it was, what would happen if he just saw 45 people praying? Would he spare them? When God still agreed, Abraham continued to bargain with God and continued to count down to what if only 10 people were praying? Which would God answer and spare the lives of the people? God agreed and he even said, if there's only 10, I will spare their lives. And knowing God, if I am sure if that conversation had been allowed to continue, God would have ended up saying, even if there is only one person, I will spare the life of the one. Because we know that God's desire, desire is to be in communion with us. And Jesus came and gave his life for each one of us to enable that to happen. We've often heard it said, if I was the only one on earth, Jesus would still have come and died for me. This is the amazing the incredible demonstration of God's love for each one of us. So, as we take communion today, whether there are thousands of us, hundreds of us, tens of us, or just you taking it, remember Jesus died, rose again, and gave you life. I'll pass over to Lib. Okay, so when we take communion, what is it actually that we're doing? First of all, I believe it's about proclaiming Jesus' death. And it's Jesus' death for everybody, whatever colour, whatever creed, whatever nationality, whatever it is, he died for each and every one of us, as we were hearing earlier. 
The second thing is remembering the ultimate demonstration of God's unfailing love. He couldn't do it any other way. And as we say, if it was even just one person, Jesus would have still, God would have still asked Jesus to come and die for that person. And that is because he can't help but love us because he wants to be in communication and in a relationship with us. And the amazing thing is also is that Jesus agreed to do it and saw it through and completed the, the plan that God had had. And then it's anticipation. It's anticipating the return of Jesus. We live here, we're doing our bit, but we all know that one day Jesus is coming back and that that is still part of this community. It's remembering it until he comes again. And finally, it's about sharing. It's sharing with the family of God, recognizing that we are part of something bigger than ourselves and that everybody is included in that. Whatever disability, color, all the different things that we talk about in terms of racism or discrimination, Jesus came and he asked for each one of us to be part of that. And as a family, we are part of that. And it is our responsibility to be inclusive and to love everybody as we love ourselves. So let's take the bread and acknowledge that through the horrendous suffering that Jesus did and took, that we now have access to all that Jesus has, all that is in the kingdom, all that God has, is already been completed by his death and through the broken body. So take your bread and have your bread. Thank you. Father, I thank you that it's your broken body, that all that you you suffered, the pain and the horrendous pain that you must have suffered, you did it willingly because you knew that through that you could complete all that you had to do in order for us to be in communion with you and the Father and to live in the fullness of God and all that you have done. And when Jesus had taken the bread, he also then took the cup. And he said that in the wine, juice, whatever it is that you have that you want to drink today, take it and declare in your life today that the blood of Jesus is your life source. It is everything that you need in order to live in this world and in the next. He forgives, he restores, he protects, he heals. Everything is abundant life for you now here on earth because the work has been completed. And it's by his blood that we have access to all of that. And, as I said earlier on, about sometimes if we, we've all got discrimination, we all have prejudice in our lives, but we all have to deal with it. And as Sarah said, it's going back to that Psalm 51, it's looking at where do you find difficulty in things, whatever it is, and ask Jesus to heal that and to forgive. And the blood of Jesus will do that. And just before I head back to Sarah and Chris, I just want to pray for us together. Father, I just thank you that your word is so true, that you are an amazing God. Father, we thank you that even if there'd only been one person, you still would have come. You still would have died. You would have risen again, and you would still be interceding to the Father on that person's behalf. But I thank you, Father, that you, you died for all of us. And Lord Jesus, I just thank you that it's by your broken body and by your blood that we now have fullness of life. And I just pray for everyone today who may be needing a touch from you spiritually, emotionally, physically, or mentally, that you will just meet with them, that they will just know your presence and how much that you have done, and that they will live in that and just rejoice in the fact that they are a child of yours. So Lord, we thank you for all that you've done. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, guys. So that, much, was, guys. that was really thank great. You. Thank you. Great, thank you, Caleb. Thank you. <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> so as we've been doing every week, we just want to give you an opportunity to respond to what you've heard. Um, and we're just going to do that by praying right now. You might be um, sitting listening to this for the first time. You may not really know who this Jesus is that we're talking about, but want and, and are seeking to get to know him. This morning is your opportunity. So I wonder if if that is you this morning, if you're saying, yes, I want to know what this is all about. I want to know this Jesus that you're talking about. If you want to right now, you can pray. I'll, I'm going to pray and you can pray the lines after me. Um, and we're going to do that just now. Hmm. So we'll pray this. Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord. Forgive me of my sins. 
Wash me, change me, and set me free. Let me never be the same again. Jesus, I believe you died for me. I thank you that you rose from the dead and now pray for me in heaven. Help me to live for you and fulfill everything you have called me to do. I thank you that I am now forgiven and I'm on my way to heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And so if this morning you have prayed that prayer for the very first time, we would really encourage you to get in touch with us. It's an amazing thing that you've done. It is the best thing that you will ever do. It's really, really good news. And so would you get in touch with us? We would love to hear from you, to know your story, to know how you came to be watching this morning and to engage with you in that way, to, to draw you in and get you connected into what goes on in the life of the King's family. And you can do that by emailing me. And Chris mentioned my email before. It's just Sarah, S-A-R-A-H at kingsinverness.com and that will come come straight to me and we, we can start a conversation which would be amazing yeah and we've obviously touched on quite a quite a difficult subject this morning and if you would like to chat through anything yeah. that, that off the back of what has been said this morning yeah. again you can use sarah's email address you yeah. can google kings inverness and get in touch that way or, or message us through the facebook page and um, we're more than happy to engage and, and chat and and, and help you work through any issues that may have come about. You know, we talked about searching our own hearts mm -hmm. this morning and that might throw up all sorts of issues. Yeah. And we don't want you to think you're alone in that just because we can't meet physically. We, we can meet via different ways and we can speak on the phone. We can do it via Zoom <laughs> and different things like that. Um, we can, in fact, we can actually stand outside in our garden and have a conversation <laughs> two metres apart. So there are there are ways. But the most important thing for me is I hate for anyone to be feeling they're alone at this time. Mm -hmm. Reach out to us, be proactive and, and let's be community. Let's be the family that we talk so much about. Yeah. Talking of that, then the, we obviously uh, have the quiz on Thursday night. Just another yeah. reminder. Um, again, if you want to be part of it, but you're not part of a life group or, or not part of one of our kind of groups, then again, get in touch and, and get let us, we can connect you into a into a team. Uh, I noticed in one of the comments during the during the, the live stream this morning, Beth and Reigns has said, it'll be worth it just to take part in the round. Do you really know your elders? <laughs> now, we've been asked for some <laughs> interesting stories, shall we say. Um, and you've apparently used to guess which elder the story applies to. So um, I didn't think I was very interesting until I started to think yeah. about some stories and then I couldn't stop. <laughs> You might discover a new side of Sarah. <laughs> that I you, know. I know, it's a little bit... You know. yeah. Yeah. So, um, the other thing just to mention, as we always do, is our virtual offering. Um, if you are, want to give towards the work of Kings, and you can do it via the website, again, Kings and Vernes, and at the top of the page, there's a tab for giving, and hopefully someone might put that link in the comments um, as we go. But that is us. We, we're delighted that you've been able to join with us. Be family, be community. Yeah. Let's spend this week loving one another. And we'll see you on Thursday night for the big quiz. Brilliant. Thank you.